Good morning, everybody. A report has been released on Substack by the veteran journalist, investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch, entitled How America Took Out the Nord Stream Pipeline. Now, we all know that this happened. The pipelines that were there to pump cheap Russian gas from Russia to Germany through four pipelines, two called Nord Stream 1 and two called Nord Stream 2, um, were blown up on the 26th of September 2022. And initially, uh, all of the Western commentariat pointed the finger at Russia, which didn't make any sense whatsoever, because it was their pipeline, they owned it, they paid £35 billion to construct it, and they were going to lose money from it, and they were talking immediately about repairing it. It was far more uh, a reasonable suggestion that it was carried out by uh, some uh, collective Western power like the United States, and that is what is confirmed in this report. Now, immediately, Joe Biden in the White House denied it and said it's utterly false and untrue. But here we have a veteran investigative journalist of whom, whose calibre there really isn't many left, um, Seymour Hirsch used to work for the New York Times. He used to work for the New Yorker magazine. So he's not someone who is, uh, you know, out there on the fringes of journalism. He works for very, very mainstream um, establishments in the United States, which are very, very much part of the United States establishment and now would be considered, you know, on the left wing, if you like. So he wrote for them. But he broke uh, stories in the past, which everybody knows about now, the My Lai Massacre in Vietnam, where American soldiers were found to have massacred an entire village in Vietnam, and the Abu Ghraib um, scandal where American soldiers were found to have been torturing prisoners of war in that prison Abu Ghraib near Baghdad when they uh, invaded uh, Iraq. So he's broken stories which uh, everybody now knows about and thank goodness he did because maybe he stopped uh, some other things happening. Um, so who do you believe? The question is who has the most credibility? Seymour Hirsch? veteran investigative journalist or Joe Biden. It's up to you to decide uh, who you believe is telling the truth. But certainly, you know, using Occam's razor, it would seem reasonable to suggest that, you know, what Seymour Hirsch is saying is actually true. And he's investigated this very, very thoroughly and put the details out on the report in uh, which was on Substack uh, yesterday. Um, as I said, more earlier this week. Um, so it appears that this was planned from before the time that the Russian special military operation began. Uh, that began in February um, 2022. But this attack on Nord Stream was planned from December 2021? Or why would anyone even be thinking about that before anything happened in Ukraine? That totally puts uh, an entirely different uh, view and angle on all the events and um, uh, that have happened. And we need to perhaps look at them in an entirely different manner to what we have been getting as the received narrative from the mainstream in the West and uh, Western governments who are escalating the situation still and talking now about giving tanks and even fighter jets to Ukraine to escalate the situation there. If this was planned by the American government going right up to Joe Biden before this happens, then really we have to ask the question, you know, what, was this, you know, all part of a bigger plan to actually get to war with Russia? We've got to ask that question. Why did it happen beforehand? But if this was carried out, um, according to the report by Seymour Hirsch, under cover of a NATO operation called Baltops. 22. And this provided the perfect cover because their NATO um, 
navies all gather in the Baltic Sea every year to have a training operation, a training exercise. So this is not unusual for uh, navy vessels to gather in the Baltic Sea in June, in the summer. This happens every single year. It's just this happened to be called 22. There would have been a Baltops 21 and 20 and so on. But under cover of this operation, um, some divers, some Norwegian divers apparently, uh, because they gave assistance to the United States in finding the best place to plant explosives and, and um, advice and so on, and even people to actually help in carrying out the operation. But there's some divers there, went down and uh, planted some C4 explosives and then camouflaged them as in the way that you would do under sea, um, underwater in June. But then uh, they were planted in such a way that they wouldn't go off immediately. That was the initial plan. But then Biden said, oh, we can't, we can't have them going off um, in June because that would be too obvious. We need to set them so that we can trigger them later on. So they set them up with some special receivers that would respond to a special signal from a sonar boy uh, that could be dropped later on uh, and then give plausible deniability. So they, they did the operation, planted the explosives on the pipelines, everyone went away, nothing happened. And then three months later, uh, on the 26th of September, the Norwegians flew over, dropped a sonar boy in the area. It sent the signal. Um, that was received by the um, explosive devices and then a few hours later it triggered a timer and then they exploded. Three of them exploded at least, uh, or maybe four, but uh, someone, did the, someone didn't do it quite right. So one of the pipelines is still functional, uh, but three of the pipelines blew up um, and uh, then we saw the pictures of all the natural gas coming out of the pipelines and the pipelines there were destroyed. Both of the ones in Nord Stream 1, which were operational, were um, hold, um, sabotage, so they can't be used uh, without huge amounts of repairs. Uh, and one of the pipelines of Nord Stream 2 was also sabotaged. One of them still remains. But Germany hadn't uh, yet uh, given permission to start operating Nord Stream 2. So nothing has ever come through um, the pipeline of Nord Stream 2. But one of them is still there waiting. It could be used if they wanted to, but they haven't got the political will to do that. So that's the situation that's painted in this report by Seymour Hirsch. And um, this really, the, the only grain and shred of comfort I can gain from this is that my country, the United Kingdom, wasn't uh, involved in this directly. I thought it might have been, but it seems that it was the United States and Norway acting together. And they did this entirely covertly because the Swedes and the Danes would not have wanted this to happen because the pipeline passed through their waters. Um, and uh, they were, you know, they were trying to keep it secret from them uh, as well. So this is uh, absolutely um, appalling. And, um, you know, there is uh, a word for that. And that word is terrorism. Um, the results of this, of course, is that the Ukraine situation has spread wider and things are just escalating. This is part of the escalation. And the real victim or the real loser in this, if you like, is Germany, because Germany relied on cheap Russian gas from you know, obviously coming from Russia, um, to provide uh, energy for its business, for its industry and its homes. Um, and now in German industry is just sinking because it doesn't have uh, cheap Russian gas anymore. What it's had to do is pivot to getting more gas from Norway. So Norway is a big winner. It can sell more gas and, and at a higher price because there goes more demand for their gas. And also America is um, converting a lot of its gas that it gets into LNG, liquid natural gas, liquefied natural gas, and then um, shipping it across the Atlantic to um, the EU. Obviously, Germany is then going to be the main customer for that and is going to pay a much, much higher price for that than it would pay for Russian gas. So America... And Norway 
have gained materially, and they are massive winners from this because they are selling uh, their gas to Germany and other countries in Europe for a much, much higher price. And they're making huge profits off the back of this sabotage. And of course, Russia is losing a little bit because they would just like to get on and do trade uh, with Western Europe. Um, it's good business for them. It's good business for Germany. They get the gas and then they can power their industry. They can make things, which is what Germany has historically been good at. Although, you know, it seems to be going down the pan at the moment um, because they're embracing wokeness and all this nonsense rather than focusing on, you know, engineering and things that they've been good at, which actually are valuable. Um, so Germany is uh, losing the biggest from this, and uh, that is the situation. So you can make of that what you will, um, but, you know, I'd say that, that it's just so much going on at the moment. You know, if there was, this would be the biggest story of the year, if not the decade, if this was just reported on its own. But it's just, there's so much happening in so many areas in, in, in all around the world that, you know, there, there's other things that are just, just as important going on um, almost every day now. Um, that this, and of course, the mainstream media doesn't want to uh, touch this or recognize this because they are pushing the narrative of escalating the conflict in Ukraine. So they wouldn't want to report anything that is going to um, prevent uh, money going to the military industrial complex who will be selling weapons to Western countries um, that are giving their weapons to Ukraine. That's the, that's the game that they're playing, which is absolutely deplorable, in my view. Um, you can make up your own minds about that as well. Um, but yeah, this story should be everywhere and it should stop the conflict immediately. If, if everyone should know about this and it should cause everyone to stop and think what on earth, what the hell is going on here that the United States and Norway have been obviously alleged uh, to be the, uh, um, the perpetrators of the biggest act of sabotage um, that the world has ever seen. That's what should happen, but probably won't.